Today we're going to talk about genetic testing specifically in ball pythons. How to do it, where to go to do it, and what a result looks like because we did one ourselves and we're going to reveal whether we are happy with those results or if they were unfortunate so that we can make better decisions when we pair our snakes in the future. Let's just say you purchased a enchi yellow belly clown that happened to be 50% head for sunset. In the past, you would have had to pair this with other snakes that were either possible head for sunset or 100% head sunset or visual sunsets, all just to determine if this snake had that head in it. And it would be a 50-50 chance. You would raise this snake up, let's just say it's a female, and your visual sunset, in this case, was a male. So you raise this girl up for three, sometimes more than three years, and then finally comes the day where she pairs. Hopefully she lays a healthy clutch and then you get no visual sunsets. All that work, all of that time put into proving out an animal just to find out that it's not what you had hoped it for. That sucks, right? What if I told you that you could find out almost right away? That is where genetic testing comes in. It is a newer tool, something that really hasn't been talked about much except for in the last couple years. So first, where do you go to get the genetic test? Genetic testing is done through Rare Genetics Incorporated. So you can start off by going to their website. So we're gonna focus on bull pythons, but really quickly, I do want to mention that they do more than bull pythons. For example, they do sex determination tests for I believe ball pythons, colubrids, pythons in general, like green tree pythons, carpet pythons, obviously with venomous reptiles that I can see being very, very helpful. I don't really feel like probing a cobra, but today we're gonna focus on the ball pythons and the genetics involved with that. So what are the genetic tests? So a few of them, for example, would be clown, sunset, ultramel, desert ghost, and even things like yellow belly or asphalt. Um, this is very useful because of course you can determine if a head's in there or if a subtle gene like yellow belly or asphalt is in there. This is particularly helpful with the last two genes I mentioned because sometimes people breed things like freeways and it is impossible to tell whether it is yellow belly or asphalt if you didn't hit another ivory or super asphalt or another freeway. So their website will redirect you to one of two different locations to have the test done and that would be either either one of Morph Market or Clutch. So we're gonna show the process for both sites on how you order your genetic test and realistically, whichever one you want to choose, they're both fairly simple to do. We're gonna start with Clutch because this particular one that I ordered, I did through Morph Market. I have one more that I want to do. I'm not gonna send it in today or anything like that, but I'm actually gonna go through Clutch just because I wanna see how it is. And I'm gonna have the full panel done for this one. So you create an account. It's very easy, very simple, not any different from creating an account on any other site. And Clutch itself is very useful for creating clutches. You can put parents together, you can see what potential results would be, and then you're able to store all of your available animals here. Really just a way to make a very nice, clean presentation instead of just keeping pages upon pages of spreadsheets. But today we wanna to just discuss how to submit the test on Clutch. So what you're going to wanna do is from the main page after you've created your profile is just click on the shed testing icon. So you will start here and you'll create your new order. Then you will add your animal. As you can see, I already have an animal in here and this is the animal that I want to have tested. So I wanna show you how to add a new animal. You're gonna to wanna to put your ID in there, whether that's a name or some sort of code. Since it's Christmas time, we're gonna call our reptile Santa. After that, you'll wanna pick the gender of it. So we'll just pick male here. Then the year of birth is the only thing that's required. Month and day are not required. So let's just say this animal was born in 2021. The next things we will need to do is type in the morphs. So let's just say we have a clown. Here we click and it puts it in our recessive file. It already knows it's recessive. I don't need to do anything else from there. Let's also say that it is blackhead, which is a very cool gene that I recently just added. And let's just say when we bought this, we were told that it would be 50% het lavender. 
albino. And what we really wanted to do is, let's just say we're really interested in the grail project. We'd really like to make some clown lavender albinos, which is known as a grail, but we don't know for sure if this boy is Het Lavender. We purchased him and he was a little bit cheaper because they didn't know. Let's also say that that pairing had a yellow belly on one side and an asphalt on the other, but the breeder didn't know. It could be yellow belly or it could be asphalt. So we don't have to put anything in there. If we're running the full panel, that is. If we're doing more than one test, you should do the full panel though, because it saves you money, honestly, and it tests for other things that you might not know are in there, but let's just leave it out. But it could be either one of those. So we're gonna save this reptile and there he is. So now we wanna drag this into our build order and we want to select our test. So our test can be here. We can do a sex determination or we could pick individual tests. So we're just going to run the full panel as which as you can see, we'll also test for yellow belly and it will test for asphalt. So we'll get our answers there too, if it is either one of those. So that way, if we also wanted to go for grail freeways, which would be insane, we could accurately get an animal to pair with this that would be able to complete that project. So we're gonna do the multi-panel test. Then we simply check out and enter your payment information. Obviously, I'm not doing this right now because Santa the ball python does not exist. And other than collecting your sample and sending it in, you're done from this point. So before we go on to that, let's discuss the other site where you can enter these in, the site that we used to test our animal, which we will reveal today. So from here, right in the middle here at the top, you get genetic testing. So you'll click on genetic testing and you will click purchased tests, ordered tests are where your results will pop up, which we will click here in a little bit just to show you what we got. So as you can see here, they show their prices off with single morph tests where it again lists everything out or you can have the full panel run, sex determination tests, all that sort of stuff. So we want to go into purchase tests. We click here and what we're going to do is we're going to need to create an animal. Again, you can do that from the screen or if you have a profile with animals already on it, you can see I can search from a lot of the animals that I have on my morph market, including ones I have for sale or ones that maybe I don't have for sale that are in my own profile that you can create so that you can have clutches be created on morph market as well. So today I want to create a new animal because not everybody's going to have animals already on here possibly. So I want to show from scratch what you do. So we want to pick our category because again, you can pick things other than bull pythons like colubrids and hog noses and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, but we want to pick bull pythons specifically here. We can say the quantity of animals we're going to create. We're just creating one. And then the test that we want to do, let's do the 22 morph panel. We're going to add this. As you can see, we already have a running total to the right. So now you want to go down here. Don't confuse yourself with what's at the top if you already had animals in there because it's trying to just save you time by loading from what you already have uploaded. So I now have an untitled ball python here. Here is where I would put in the genetics. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to make our clown blackhead, which is 50% het lavender albino. You can also put certain possibles here as well. I'm not seeing if you can do yellow belly. I think it's just for the recessives. But again, that's not really relevant if we're doing the full panel because it's gonna tell us everything anyways. We can put some notes in here. If you just want one test, maybe you could put a note in there saying, I want to determine if this is a 100% het pied. You don't have to put any notes there. I mean, the test is obviously gonna tell you what it is. In our case today, we're doing the full test. So now we would hit purchase. Then again, we are putting in our details which this is where I'll stop. So now that you've ordered your test, what do you need to do? Well, you might wait to order your test until your snake sheds so that you can do it almost immediately. But what you want to do is watch for your animal to have a shed. So obviously you know what to look for when having a shed. Cloudy eyes, skin being ghostly. But what you're going to need to do is check a couple times a day for the snake to shed. Once it is shed, remove it from its enclosure as soon as possible. Humidity and moisture, ironically, which helps your snake shed, is gonna be your worst enemy in this case. So getting it out of that environment as quickly as possible is what you want to do. And wouldn't you look at that, we have some shed today. This is not the shed that I want to have tested. This is actual shed that I use to get my males to breed because it's from another male. But what we want to do is we want to flatten the shed out and tear any pieces off that are dirty or degraded. So what I want to do is straighten this out as much as possible. This is a mess because I, in this case, would have done a very poor job getting it out. But I'm going to want to get as much as possible right off the bat so I have a clean sample. And as you can see, I have a pretty good sample right here. So I do not need the whole shed. I sent less than this. I will then want to put the shed 
into a Ziploc baggie. and seal it up so that there's no way that it can get wet. At this point, you're going to want to make sure you label this bag, especially if you're sending in multiple tests. If you don't label the bag, how are they gonna know what to test? You're gonna receive a shed ID and an order ID, which you're going to want to label on there as well. This tells them what they've received so that they know who to update. After that, you're going to want to package it up in probably a manila envelope, preferably with the little bubbles in there. That way it can resist moisture as well and provide a little bit of protection. You're also gonna wanna write your order ID on the outside of the package that you send this in. And after that, you simply mail it. Just again, don't forget to label. Otherwise they're not gonna know what they got, especially if you forgot your order ID. And it's realistically as simple as that. Now it's just a game of waiting. Now with any test that you submit, there can be varying wait times, depending on how many tests that they're already doing. I believe mine took about three to maybe four weeks. And I believe that they provide the information telling you about what the wait time could be. So it's not like it's being hidden from you. So the animal that we had tested, we named her Dottie and she is an orange dream, pastel, leopard, het clown. And she was also 50% het pied. And and that's kind of what I wanted to have answered. Um, I did breed her for the first time this year. I'm hoping that she takes to the animal that I'm actually about to send off. The GHI spot nose clown possible pet hypo. So theoretically she lays eggs and she has babies. These babies, if she is het pied, will become themselves 50% het pied. If she is not het pied, none of them will be. So when you do receive your results, you'll receive a notification through your email. That will take you to the site itself. You can see the one that we just made. Obviously I'll go through there and delete that because that's not real. But underneath you can see my result for the one that I actually put in. So is my snake het pied? I could go for certain combos with clown pied. Certainly if I then send the test in and my male proves out to be het hypo, I could go for certain triple hets even. So is she or is she not het pied? And just like that, she is het. That is awesome. That adds a lot of value to what I can do with this animal. I mean, I'm not gonna fake my excitement here because obviously I've known this result for a little bit of time now. The first time this happened, I was pumped because to combine Pied and Clown though now, it just adds more than I can do with her. Realistically, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to send in a shed for one of her babies. I might send in a few of them because I want to see if they are het pied. If I get a significantly cool animal out of this, if I can then send in some tests and find out that they are also het pied, I might be in the market for a male that would just help me complete a crazy clown pied project, like a Batman clown pied with orange dream and all sorts of coolness in there. It just opens up more avenues of things that I can work. You might think that you should wait on a test that they'll make it available, but guess what? You can email them from their website and you can ask them, hey, is this particular test in the works right now? They'll happily tell you. So maybe then you can decide, ah, I'm gonna wait until that one so I can do a full panel. But I am over the moon excited about this. This tool changes the game for us in reptile breeding. I have heard people say that they're worried about it though. And while to an extent I can see why it would possibly affect the market, I don't agree. The thought process is that things will progress quicker now and thus drop prices. But if you're trying to create a new combo with hets especially, that's always a minimum three year process. So at that point, it feels like people might be hoping that someone else would fail so that that process was extended by maybe another three years because they found out something didn't prove out. That doesn't make any sense to me why that would hurt anything. This helps. If you bred a het sunset to some animals and you need to determine which ones are het sunset, and there's a slew of different co-dominants in there, that increases the price of your animal for it to have het sunset. It makes sense to have the entire clutch tested because 50% of the time you should be hitting it anyway and now you know which ones. You don't have to sell these as 50% het sunset. It can change the cost of an animal monumentally. It's 
especially if you have an animal with two visual recessives possibly already, or maybe it has a packed set of genes with one recessive and one that was possibly het for something that you were looking for. It gives you more avenues as a seller and certainly as a breeder. This is awesome. And having gone through the process now myself, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I love it. If you're still watching this video, you likely are into breeding. And if you're into breeding, you might be looking to start a business in ball pythons. And you can watch our video on that subject right here.